In chapter 3, we're going to start looking at how we define our own classes. So far, we've been using classes uh, to create objects, uh, calling methods and objects, but we've been really using predefined classes, classes already largely there, and methods already there. So now we're going to start looking at creating our own classes and writing our own methods and uh, setting up those kind of templates for the objects we want to create. Uh, let me clear this out. So the first thing we're going to look at is some general classes and what a class is. So again, a class is used to construct objects. It's a template for instantiating objects. Um, let's just look at a sample class here called runner information. Let's say we're, uh, we have a bunch of runners completing a race, maybe the Rife run at St. Scholastica. And we want to keep information about each runner. So we're going to keep track of the time each runner's run and the distance each, each runner's run. Now here's actually a bad exa an example of some bad documentation. We have this variable called time run, but we have no comments here. So we don't know if this is a time in seconds and minutes or what. Same with distance. Is this distance in kilometers and meters, miles? How is this? So um, those should be commented better. So. In fact, when I created these, this class in BlueJ, um, I added some comments in here. Time in seconds, distance ran in miles. Um, one other quick note is that the text does not use Javadoc's comments. So it just uses some simple comments here. Uh, and sometimes I'll keep those, but sometimes I'll switch them to Javadocs. And when you're working on things, we prefer that you use, uh, and we'll get more in the Javadocs later on in this unit. But we'll, we'll be working with this sort of Javadocs kind of format for comments uh, and introducing that. So at times you'll see I'll change the comment structure of uh, the examples from the book. Okay, sorry for that little diversion. Okay, so we have public class runner info. So that's how we declare a class. We always say public and then class and then the name of the class. Uh, now, some people will argue that classes should always be a single word or verb, like runner or something like that, but uh, I'm a little more flexible on the textbook kids here runner info, information on a runner. So that's how we declare our class, and we have a, a bracket. A curly bracket here that ends down here. Everything within this is our class definition. We start by defining some variables we're going to use in our class and we'll generally declare these as private variables which means they only can be used within the class not outside the class and then we'll declare public methods that will access these variables and set them in different ways. Oh, and so again when we declare variables we'll say public, uh, void, or we might return a type. So this is the return type of the variable, of the method. And we'll look at more of that. We'll have a whole section on methods coming up. The name of the method and then the arguments. So we'll see different things about arguments and what how we return things later on. So this is just how we declare a method and we'll declare them public. Now we sometimes we'll use private variables, I mean private methods uh, internally. So what this means is that when we're using a class, anything that's public can be accessed outside the class. Uh, in one way or the other. So uh, here we have a main program uh, that declares a runner and calls these methods. So like this program can access only the public information up here. So if there are public variables it could access them but all the variables are private. If it, there are public methods here, if there are private methods we couldn't access them from this little routine down here, this, this new program. So this is what we want to look at is how do we declare a object uh, using the class up here. The class is called runner info. So we declare a variable like we might declare an integer variable. We declare it of runner info. So this is the type of the variable. This is the variable name. In fact, we declare two runners, runner one and runner two. Apparently, we don't have very many runners in our race, just two of them. Uh, and then th there's a two-step process we have to go through. We not only have to declare the variable, we also have to instantiate it, create a new variable. This calls what's called the constructor in the class that creates that class. Uh, now, generally, you should be able to look up here and see the constructor up here. Uh, by default, uh, if you don't put one in, it just puts in a blank constructor. Uh, we generally like to even put in the blank constructor if it's not there. So here's runner info and I've just stuck in a a blank constructor and I've actually done some initialization so here's the constructor and we'll learn more about this it has the same name as the class and it's a little different format than some of the other methods uh, as far as how it's declared 
So this is the constructor. So this is what we call oh, when we, let's get down here, oh, when we say new runner info, this is the constructor for that class. Now, once we have this variable like runner1, we can call methods. So the method set time is defined up here and has one parameter, an integer, for the seconds run. And so we can call that. We use this dot notation. We'll say the name of the variable, dot, and the name of the method, and then any arguments that we may have. Okay. Now, sometimes these methods will return values. They may be uh, void, public void methods, meaning they don't return anything, or they may return some value. So this returns some calculation here. Now, when they return something, uh, then when we call them, we often put them in an expression or in a print line or something like that. So here's another call. We're calling runner two dot get mile speed miles per hour. So this gets this, the speed and puts it inside this print line statement. Now, this main program sets up and does this. We can do the same thing in BlueJ. Um, so if I'm over in BlueJ here, um, I can create a new runner. So I can click on runner info and say new runner info and call it runner1. So that'll create a little runner1. So that's a visualization for this statement here in our variable runner1. Now I can call runner1.setTime. So I can right click on here and here's, notice it's hiding all the private variables and stuff. So all I see is the public variables. So I can call my set time and type in the time in seconds for that. Oh, and that's this. And then again, set distance. I ran 1.2 miles. So I can do the same thing here. I can uh, call set distance and type in 1.2. So this um, sort of stuff uh, we can do explicitly in BlueJ without having this main program here. Same here, I created a runner2 uh, here. So I can, again, go through, create a new runner, runner2. And I can set that runner's information. I can set that the distance ran. Let's say that ran, oops, let's type in the right thing, ran the same amount of uh, distance and we can also set uh, don't click on the class I want to make sure I click on the actual uh, object I created I can set the distance uh, and the time here uh, so in the same way I, I can set this stuff here I can set I can uh, do this explicitly here. Same with uh, here, if I want to print this out, uh, I can, uh, it's a little harder to do a print line. I can call this get miles per hour with these things. So I can say runners and I can get the speed in miles per hour and it will just show me what it is here. Okay, so that's a sample uh, class. Now, the text will walk you through some of this stuff, talks about, uh, again, public and private variables, a little bit that we want uh, public access. We want to have these uh, member, these uh, methods to, uh, to access everything here. It talks about how we call an object and walks you through some of this stuff. So just go through this uh, to talk about this sort of interface. Now, when we talk about an object, uh, we talk about the interface with the object. So when we create an object, the class kind of defines how we interact. These are the different methods we can access in that class. So uh, look at that sort of stuff, uh, how we declare uh, a class. Uh, I've discussed that above. Um, and then go through and tr do these sample, I mean these uh, exercises here, this participation activity. Um, now, walks you through defining your own class. This is, a, again, the basic template for a class. We'll say public class in the class name, a curly bracket and a curly bracket here. We'll have our private variables here, uh, generally a private, and then the type of variable, and then the name of that variable. And then we'll have our public methods. We might also have some private methods in here. So we'll have public, the type of the method, the return type, the name of the method, and then any parameters we have. And then we'll have brackets. Now, in fact, when BlueJ, when you create a new class, um, I test class. So if I create a new class here, it actually lays out a template for your class. Uh, has a 
documentation at the beginning, your public class, and then the whatever class name, you're in the brackets that goes down to here. Gives you an example of a uh, an instance variable and shows you how that. So you, we generally replace this with our own instance variables. Uh, puts in a constructor, uh, just a basic constructor here, and then a sample method. Uh, and then again, it adds these uh, comment sections here. Uh, but again, when we create a new class, it creates this nice little template uh, for us to use for working with classes, very similar to this. Um, talk about this implementation so when we create an object we instantiate it and then we can call methods uh, that are implemented inside the class okay so go through this others check and then get down to the challenge exer exercises down here um, one thing we will look at is when we have a program that uh, one class that uses another class. Um, so, for example, here we have our runner info cl uh, class. And I, again, I can instantiate those directly, or I could create a new class. Uh, and this is right out of the book runner one, runner two, that actually use, uh, calls that uh, runner uh, info class. And when one class uses uh, objects in another class, you'll see this little dotted arrow showing that that's the case uh, when one class uses another. Sometimes in these exercises, you won't get the arrow right away. Uh, usually that means there's a compile error. Something else isn't quite up and running there. Um, okay, so the last thing you want to do is uh, this right triangle method. Uh, so we want to have you uh, fix some things here. So right triangle has two sides uh, and a hypotenuse between them. Uh, the hypotenuse can be calculated by the other two sides. So you need to go through here and up, uh, kind of fix up this class. So right now we define side one. You have to define side two. We have a method for setting side one. You have to define a method for setting side two. And then you can, un once you have that declared, you can uncomment this to calculate the hypotenuse uh, and get this to run. Uh, so I've also put that here uh, in this right triangle method and then uh, a little program to, to test out that uh, that's here. Uh, so that's these two methods. Now when we get down to the challenge activities, if you want to try these, one thing to watch out for is that here we we often have our two methods. So here we have the runner info in one file and then the runner times the main program in another file. Uh, and we want to do that generally and BlueJay will force us to do that. Um, here we have the two files and we can switch back and forth to see them both. So they're kind of side by side. But in the challenge activities, they put here they put a person info class here, and it ends, and then they have code for a call person info class here. So this will run fine within uh, this uh, browser here, but what doesn't run that way in BlueJay? BlueJay will flag this as an error. So we'll have here a call person info that main program up there and a person info down here uh, as two separate classes. So if you're if you're trying these out, certainly you can run this this challenge activity. Uh, there's this one and the one after it. Uh, you can do this right on screen here. But if you do want to try it out in BlueJ, remember that uh, I've separated those into two classes. So all these are will be in the chapter three uh, file that you can download.